Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Well, today, amen, we're going to be talking about walking in your greatness. Walking in your greatness. Amen? Because God has a great plan for you. We've been studying the book of Ephesians. The book of Ephesians. And we did one, two, and three, and six. And now we're on chapter four. Everybody say chapter four. Amen. But God has called us to walk in our greatness. And this, this book is like a boot camp for the believer. Ephesians is a very powerful book. And so my prayer for you is that as we study this book, that this is just not a spiritual exercise, that you are actually going back and like those Berean Christians studying the word to see that what I'm saying is so. Amen. So I thank God for all of you all, different ones that are traveling and are taking their kids to college and to school and all the different things, all the different uh, places and faces. My prayer is that the Holy Spirit will rest on you and strengthen you. Some uh, uh, have injured yourself, we pray for you. Our Lisa, God, touch your leg, your, your, your tibia in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, Bonnie, your leg. Good to see uh, Sister Marquita pray for you as well. God continually heal your arm. Amen. And all those that are home, my seniors, we thank God for you. Robin Smith, Lula Sanders, Stella. God, we thank God for each and every one of you. Uh, Mother Hattie, all the different ones. We just thank God for you. Become church family. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. And look, you, I'm glad to see you. But I got something to say to you. Go walk in your greatness. Now find someone else. Come on, say neighbor. I'm glad to see you. But you must, you have to walk in your greatness. Amen. God has a plan for you. Amen. Let's stand to our feet as we read out of the book of Ephesians chapter 1 through uh, 16. 1 through 16, we'll be reading. Let me make sure I'm telling you right. Hallelujah. I may have cut it off at 12. Hallelujah. Because I want to make sure that we take our time. 1 through 12, we'll be reading. Ephesians chapter 4, 1 through 12. And I'm going to do the first part today, and then we'll, we're going to take our time on this chapter because there's so much in this chapter. Amen? And we're going to look for God to really speak to our hearts as we read the word. We believe, as it talks about in James, that we are like men and women. When we look at the word, we allow it to look at us. Amen? When we read the word, we let the word read us. So, again, see yourself in, third dimension, in, in the third dimension and see yourself in the word. Don't think about your neighbor that needs to be here to hear this word. Look at you, because it's me, oh me, oh me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Amen? You know how we get sometimes, sometimes we think about, man, I wish this person was here to hear the word. But the beautiful thing about this, after you get the word for yourself, feel free to like and share and send it to that loved one that needs a now word. Amen? Let me tell you something, saints. More than ever, we need the word in social media. Amen. It's so much mess and junk and fear and doubt and unbelief that's being passed around on social media. How much more can we share the love, the truth, amen, the goodness, amen, the long suffering, amen, the peace that come from the word on social media. So I want to encourage you, amen. Someone needs encouragement. Feel free to like and share. And those of you that are watching with me at home, feel free to interact with me. Amen. Type in the scriptures. Be an active listener as we read this word together. Amen. Those of you that are here in the sanctuary, thank you for standing. Amen. And at home, let's go ahead and stand to our feet and let's read these words. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 4 initially. Amen. We'll read total in totality 1 through 12. It says... Let's read together. Therefore, I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to what? Lead a life worthy of your calling. For you have been called by God. God. Amen. Let's keep reading. It says, always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other. Making allowances for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. 
For there is one body, one spirit, just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future. Let's keep going. There is one Lord. Oh, uh, let me, let me, I'm sorry. Let me do the slide. I got excited reading the word. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and the father of all who is over all and in all and living what? Through all. However, he has given each one of us a special gift. Everybody say a special gift. A special gift through what? The generosity of Christ. That is why the scriptures say when he ascended to the heights, he led a crowd of captives and gave gift to his people. Amen. Let's keep reading. Notice that it says the he ascended. This clearly means that Christ also descended to our lowly world. And he, and the same one who descended is the one who what? Ascended higher than all the heavens so that he might fill the entire universe with himself. Now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church. The apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and the teachers. The responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and to build up the church, the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. Turn with me there. Highlight that in your Bibles and in your tablets. Isaiah chapter 40. Amen. Verse 31. I'll be reading in the contemporary English version. And, and the last version was the New uh, Living Translation that we read Ephesians in. Here we go. Isaiah 40, verse 31. It says this, but those who trust the Lord will find new strength. Everybody say new strength. They will be strong like eagles soaring. Everybody say soaring. It doesn't stop there. It says it's a upward on wings that will walk and run without getting tired. Amen. Amen. And amen. Pray with bow with me in a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you right now. Ah, we declare and decree that this is your time, God. How it steps down. Holy Spirit, you step up. Speak like only you can. Holy Spirit, you have a way of speaking to each person like they're the only ones in the room. I surrender my manuscript. I surrender my notes. I surrender all that I've prepared to you right now. We say be glorified. Speak like only you can. In Jesus' name. Come on, saints. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen and amen and amen. You may be seated if you can. Amen. Hallelujah. Ephesians is one of my favorite books in the Bible. Amen. One of, there are, I have a bunch of favorites. If you listen to me for years, I mean, I have a bunch of favorites, but it's one of the first books when I got saved that God had me to read after Romans, amen? And so, uh, of the first epistles, amen? And when I got saved, God gave me just a, a vicious hunger for the Word of God. So, sometimes I was reading two to three books at a time. Sometimes I was reading Mark and Matthew and, and an epistle all at the same time. And I couldn't get enough of, of the Word at age 16. I couldn't get enough of the Word. I just wanted more and more Word. Amen. But I didn't realize it was a hunger that God placed in me until one of my friends who had been a Christian longer than me, who was, who, who was my peer, he says, Howard, that hunger you have is not natural. It's supernatural. Amen. And how many know when God touches your life, he'll put a supernatural hunger for his word. Amen. If you ask him to. Amen. You say, well, when did, I, when did you ask when I was saying, Lord, anybody ever prayed this prayer? Lord, use me. In order for God to use you, he has to empty you. He has to empty you so he can fill you with more of him. See, once he empties you and gets you in those desperate situations, then he, he, then he puts in that hunger and that longing for more of him. Amen? Amen. So, several things happened in that year when I got ready to graduate that put a hunger in. One, my dad had had a job with the government for years. He got laid off. The first layoff they had in about 50 years. Guess what? I had to go to college. Amen. 
God, I had to begin to cry out to God all around the same time that I rededicated my life to the Lord. God put up through the crisis. He showed me the Christ. Sometimes God will allow, are y'all with me church? Crisis to come in your life so you can see the Christ in a new way and a deeper revelation. Everybody say deeper revelation. See, sometimes see, we know him, but then sometimes we know him. Let me say it like this, mental ascent. But God wants you to know him from the heart. He wants you to know that he's a provider. See, I can know by my head that he's a provider. But guess what? When that, when, when, when that first kid went to college, that first child, God's child went to college of mine, and I saw that bill paid, I said, God, you are a provider. Amen. Amen. He's faithful. He's dire more than enough. Let's look at this Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. Y'all got to stop asking me all these questions because we have a lot to get to today. Amen. It says this, therefore, when you see a therefore, you got to look at what it's. Therefore, it says, I, a prisoner. Who's the I? Paul. He's talking about Paul and he's saying, he said he's the, uh, a prisoner, but guess what? If you're going for God and you're loving God, you're a prisoner as well. But he was, this speaks of being a voluntary prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to what? Lead a life, what? Worthy of your calling. For you have been what? Called by God. Now no, notice this. He's about to give a request. Is it really a request in the second verse? No, he's about to be, give a command. Notice this. He says what? Because if I say, go, am I asking you to go? Huh? No, I'm telling you to go. Goes on to say in the second verse, always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other. Right there, we need to just raise our hands right there and say, Lord, help us. Right now, you can just think about somebody you could have been more patient with. Amen? Just like, gosh. That's about the word. When you read the word, it reads you. Be patient with each other. Making allowance for each other. Fault because what? Of your love. Now, that speaks of the love that God's placed, his love that he's placed in our hearts through his spirit. Help me, Lord. To not block your love. I know sometimes we can block his love. Just with us. That's why John the Baptist says, I must decrease and he must increase. Are y'all seeing all this in here? It goes on the third verse, it says, make every effort. What does every effort mean? Every effort. As much as you can. This lets you know that it takes work to walk in his love. Amen? It says, make every effort to keep yourselves what? United in the spirit. It's work. Another, another place it says, endeavor to keep the unity of the saints, binding yourselves together with peace. For there is one body, one spirit, just as you've been called to one glorious hope for what? The future. Turn to somebody and say, there's a future. And it's good and not evil. Amen? And he's preparing me for it. Amen? Now understand this, when he says, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord in that, in that first verse, this, re- this goes back to the beginning of chapter 3. Paul speaks of himself as the prisoner of Jesus Christ. Therefore, he takes you back to that verse. And you may remember he said, he says, I beseech you that you walk what? Worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. The, 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 the say this, what's a vocation? A career, a job. This is your new mission statement. This is your new plan that you walk worthy of what you've been called to. See, this takes us back to the first three chapters that we've studied and all the spiritual blessings that you have in Christ Jesus. Well, one may ask, what are those spiritual blessings? Can we review and recapitulate real quickly? Can we do that? Let's do that, okay? Because, I, you know, it's something refreshing about getting this in our spirit. And hopefully, I would encourage you, take a picture of the slide if you can, so that you can go back and rehearse this on a daily basis and remind yourself how blessed you are. Amen? Somebody said, how you doing? Blessed and highly favored. But do you really realize how blessed you are? 
You're blessed. Let's look at this. First thing is, God has what? Accepted you just the way you are. He's accepted you. It says that in Ephesians 1 and 6. Ephesians 1 and 7 says, God has redeemed you. He has redeemed you. Amen. It goes on to say, also, he has forgiven your sins and my sins. He has made known to you the mystery of his will. Ephesians 1 and 9. He has, you have been made here and the heirs of God. You have an inheritance. See, some of you don't even realize. That's sort of just a shout right there. You are an heir of Father God. He has sealed you with his Holy Spirit. He's given us the gift, the teacher, the comforter, the Holy Spirit. He sealed us. He has made you what? Alive together in Christ. We were dead in sin, but he's brought us alive in Christ. Ephesians 2 and 5. He has saved you by grace. Ephesians 2 and 5. Amen? Are y'all ready? Are y'all getting this in your spirit? But hey, I wish I could tell you that was it. But there's more. Turn to your name and say there's more. There really is much, much more. We're just touching it a little bit. He, but seated you in heavenly places in Christ. That means you're walking in Christ-like authority. Not because of anything you've done, but because of what your big brother Jesus Christ has done. Amen? He is working you in you to prepare you to accomplish his eternal purposes on the earth and in the world to come. He's working in you. Amen. The Bible lets us know in Philippians, he that has begun a good work will complete it to the very end. He has, that's Ephesians 2 and 10. He has brought you near by the blood of Jesus Christ. Ephesians 2 and 13. Aren't you glad that you're brought near now? You don't have to stare far off. You say, well, pastor, you don't know what I did this week. Well, I don't have to know what you did this week because I know a God that says in Romans 8 and 1, therefore there is what? No condemnation in Christ Jesus for those who love him. So all you have to do, it says in 1 John 1 and 8, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all righteousness. You don't have to go to the priest. You don't have to go to the preacher. You, because of what Christ did on the cross, you can go directly to God and say, God, I'm sorry. Forgive me. And you have been re reconciled to God. Amen? You don't, have to, you don't have to meditate on it. God says it's done if you confess it. Amen. He has given you access by the Spirit to the Father. Ah, oh, we have access. Amen. He has made you a fellow citizen of the household of God. Ephesians 2. Amen. 18 and 2 and 19. You understand that we, we says, it says that the Gentile and the Jew are now in the household of faith because of what Christ did. The two become one. We're all the family of God if you accept the Christ. Amen. He now indwells in you by what? His Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, live in my heart. How many of the Holy Spirit will let you know when you're right or wrong if you listen to him? If you listen to him. And if you don't, he's still trying to tell you. But a lot of times we don't listen. Lord, help me to listen to your spirit. Amen. And not <laughs> excuse your conviction away, but walk in it. Amen. Now, understand this. This is a strong exhortation that God, that Paul has given us, inspired by God to give us in the fourth chapter. But he doesn't start with this exhortation. Notice that he told us how blessed we were before. He blessed us out. You know, some folk like to curse people out. Well, God likes to what? Bless us out. He blesses us out so that he can bring us in. I don't know if you got that. He blesses us out 
so that he can bring us in. Amen. So he tells us how blessed we are. Out of his mouth, he speaks blessings and blessings and blessings and blessings to bring us in. The Bible says by loving kindness, he draws us. So he blesses us out to bring us in. Amen. And so you see here, he says he lays the groundwork. Paul lays the groundwork in the first three chapters, letting you know what you are in Christ Jesus and what God has done for you by Christ Jesus and the power available for you through the Holy Spirit. He's letting you know what you're working with. Amen. Because if you know who you are and you know what you have, then you know what you can do and nothing will be able to stop you. The reason why we get stopped most times is because we forget who we are. We forget what we have and we forget what we can do. How would I look like if I have an AK-47 in my hand, in my house, and a gang of people break in and I'm just standing looking at them while they beat my kids and my wife? How would I look? Absolutely crazy. Sometimes because we don't know what we have, because I have, I have the thing that can solve the problem right there to defend my household right in my hands. Amen? So many times as believers, we have this word of God that is greater than any weapon on the earth. It is God's eternal word and his divine authority that we're walking in. Amen? Of truth. We have everything that we need to defeat Satan. We have the promise that Satan is already defeated. That he's a defeated foe. But yet, we let the enemy ransack our homes, ransack our dreams, ransack our purpose and our mission because we don't know who we are. We don't know what we have. And we don't realize what we can do in Christ Jesus. All things are possible in him. He has given you all the equipment necessary to walk worthy. Everything that you need to walk this life, God gives it to you. You don't have to go try to find it. It's all, the seed of it is already inside of you when you got saved. Just like when a tree, when that acorn falls to the ground, that in that acorn is everything in that acorn to become a tree. Everything that's needed. All that is needed is some time, some darkness, and some water. And then it becomes what? It begins to grow. Need some what? Time. Talk to me. Darkness. And some water. To grow. How many know in our lives all we need is some time? How many know we got to go through some darkness? Because what good is light if you're always in the light? And you, got, you need some what? What's the last thing? Water. Some water the, water. the water of the word. In order to grow. Are you with me? To try to walk worthy without the aid, get this now, of God. Well, what? It would be almost impossible. Huh? It would be frustrating. It would be futile to try to walk this thing without the aid of the Holy Spirit. Now, let's look at what it means to walk worthy. Are y'all getting something out of this? I mean, I'm, I'm getting blessed by this thing. Amen? Amen. I pray that this speaks to you. Let's look at what it means to walk worthy as I hydrate a little bit. Amen? What does it mean to walk, wor to walk worthy? Well, the first thing it, it lets us know in that scripture that we need to walk in humility. Everybody say humility. Paul speaks of himself as the least of the apostles and not over being, not even being worthy of being called an apostle. But he said, by the grace of God, I am what I am. In 3 and 8, he referred to himself as less than the least of all the saints. What is humility? It's esteeming others higher than yourself. It's not thinking too highly of yourself. How many know we get in trouble when we think too highly of ourselves? I heard a true story about how they, in the church, uh, this one tradition of the church was looking to find the most humblest person in the church. And they searched for two weeks. 
And then once they found the most humblest person in the church, they gave him this big party and award for it. And by the end of the party, he says, I have to give it back because now I think I've arrived. Once you think you've arrived, it's a good chance that you're not there. Are you with me? <laughs> the Bible says, let others talk about how awesome you are, not yourself. He says, I got to give the award back. You know why he wanted to give the award back? Because he says, God gives rewards, but man gives awards. I don't know about you. I want the reward. I want to hear good, well done, my good and faithful servant. In the end, let's keep going. Let's talk about walking in humility. See, understand this. In Greek culture where Paul was, 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 was speaking to at the time, he says, understand humility was not considered a virtue. They had a word called megalosuke, which is mega mind, and, a, and was the opposite of humility that they considered a virtue. This, this spoke of being full of yourself, full of your own thinking. How many know in order to walk in humility, you have to empty, empty yourself of yourself? Amen? Amen. Say, neighbor, you got to empty yourself and ask for more of him. Amen and amen. Christians, we live not for our own glory or worldly recognition, but for the glory of the Lord. God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, humility is esteeming others higher than yourself. Philippians chapter 2, I would encourage you to read Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. It breaks down the steps downward that, that even the Christ, the Son of the living God, had to take in order to walk in humility. And because he walked in humility, he was exalted. The Bible says if you humble yourself, he will exalt you. Amen? Let's keep going. What does it mean to walk worthy? Secondly, you need to have what? Meekness or gentleness. Meekness or gentleness. The Greek word is praus. Everybody say praus. Amen. You know, I don't like to just give Greek for the sake of giving Greek. Amen. But I do want you to get something out of this. Amen. Aristotle defined it as the mean between excessive anger and excessive angerlessness. Being too angry and never being angry at all, you don't want that, you wanna be right in that middle. Because how I many know when you meet, you can learn? When, you, when you're gentle, how many like to be around gentle people? Do you like to be around coarse people that are always fussing? I say, Lord, oh, I'm getting convicted while I'm talking. Lord, help me, amen? Help me, amen? God, keep me teachable. Another thing about meekness, it speaks of being teachable. Everybody say teachable. That means you don't, you're not a know-it-all. Somebody's telling you something that you already know. You don't have to cut them off and say, I know. We're living in a society that likes to say, I know all the time. And sometimes we just know it here and we don't know it here. And sometimes we need to listen. Part of the humility and the meekness is to listen from someone else because sometimes God is trying to tell you what you thought you knew. Are y'all with me? And sometimes it's just a discipline of listening to God speak through that person, hearing the God in them talking to you, but we cut God off. Because I know. I know God. I know. God said, will you humble yourself to hear me through someone else? Sometimes they'll use the person that you don't want to hear from. He'll use the sinner. He'll use that person that's not even as mature as you in Christ. Why? Because he's trying to work humility and meekness and gentleness in you. Are y'all with me? See, there are a couple things we've talked about being right in that middle and not being angry and not being where you're not moved by anything, but right in that middle because God wants us to be passionate. He wants us to be passionate about justice. He wants us to be passionate about what? Injustices, making wrongs right. But he doesn't want us to get and move over into anger. Amen? 
Understand this, there are injustices in the world that should make us angry, but we should not be angry over every little thing that happens to us, amen? The same Greek word is used for an animal that has been tamed, a wild animal that has been tamed, whose great forces are brought into submission and obedience by the trainer. Understand this, I think about it's like seeing that, that, that elephant being held by a little rope. I heard a story about that, how that, that elephant is trained from a young, how many know an elephant has one of the longest memories of the mammals? But at a young age, they wrap a little rope around his ankle. And so whenever he tries to go beyond that air, it pulls him back. And they do that for the first two to three years. Has the greatest memory. So when he gets bigger and bigger, he puts that rope around his leg, he still, he won't go beyond that rope because it's been ingrained in him. He's been tamed. God sometimes wants to have us on a leash. What do you mean, pastor? You know, when you want to give people a piece of your mind, maybe you need to put that piece back in your mind, amen? And keep your peace so you can have the mind of Christ. Uh, yeah, sometimes you got to let God fight your battle. Are y'all with me? Let me change that. All the time, you need to let God fight your battle. It's not a sometime thing. Amen? He has a way of doing it better and much better than how we could have done it. Amen? You ready for the next one? The next one we need what? We need patience. Everybody say patience. Patience. It comes from the, the Greek word macrothumia. Macrothumia. It is the spirit that never gives up, never concedes defeat. Did he get that in your spirit? Turn to your name and say, ne never give up. Amen. And never admit defeat. Because God has called you to walk in victory. Understand this. If you are in a chapter where it doesn't look good, know that the book isn't over yet. The story isn't over yet. Amen. That victory is, in the, is, is, is coming soon. Understand the Bible says all things are working together for my good. Sometimes you're just in a bad chapter. And you got to remind yourself, oh, there's more, there's more to this story. <laughs> oh, gosh, it doesn't end here. Amen? But all my, all, everything that I go through is going to work together for my good. It's a promise. Amen? Understand this. Roman culture back then did not even think of losing a war. They might lose a battle, but they never saw themselves as defeated. They had a strong belief in ultimate victory. They understood, ultimately, I'm going to get to victory. How many know when you believe in ultimate victory, it, it puts a fight in you? A fight that can't be stopped. A fight that can't be defeated. Are you with me? Let's keep going. The second meaning is patience with men. Patience with men. The spirit that has the power to what? Take revenge, but never does. Did he get that? See, the second man, meaning of macrothemia is patience with men. The spirit that has the power to take revenge, but never does. Paul amplifies this in 1 Corinthians 13 when he says, bears all things, believe all things, and hopes all things. What does it bear? It bears insult and injury without complaint. Help me, Jesus. Come on, put your hands up if you need some help. Lord, help you right now. Amen. Say, say, oh me, or say, ouch, or say, amen. He's the one. Amen. It is the one of the characteristics of God that we all need. Are y'all getting something out of this? Let's keep going. This is some good stuff. Fourthly, how many want to say, 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 to walk worthy? What do I need? I need patience. Huh? I need patience. I need meekness and gentleness. I need what? Also, humility. And the other thing we need, I need love. One of the most underestimated powers of the gospel is love. Bearing with one another in love. And I'm talking about agape love. And in Greek, there were four words for love. There was eros, which speaks of passion and that, 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 that lustful love that a man may have for a woman. 
the philea, that emotional love. And storage, which is the family love, the love that you have mothers and father, the, 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 the son or daughter. But fourthly, was that unconditional love. That everybody say agape love. God is speaking about that agape love. Amen. He wants you to love with, with his love, which is an everlasting love. In order to find agape love, that unconditional love, I want to look at a few scriptures that talk and highlights that, and they're found in 1 Corinthians 13. Let's look what that agape love does. Well, one thing we see it does, it suffers long and it's kind. Love envieth not. Love what? Vaulteth not itself. Is not puffed up. Open, just open it right there. Just put yourself on the altar and say, Lord, help me. Amen. Some of you may have to go apologize to your spouse today as you watch this message. Amen. How many know it's all right? You don't have to wait to the end of the message. Just say, Lord, help me. Help me, God. Love doth not for what? Behave itself unseemly. Some of you were acting up right before no, not this message. Seek if not her own. It's not easy to provoke. Think if no evil. God, help me to walk in love. You ever get where you start thinking what you think the other person is thinking and it's not nice? Well, their motive is probably this. How I many know oh, that's not the Holy Spirit? <laughs> that's your spirit plotting how you're going to stay one step ahead to defend your flesh. Jesus died to all of that. Lord, I don't know about you, saints, but my prayer is, Lord, help me to be more like you. I'm found wanting. 1 Corinthians 13, 6 says, Love rejoiceth not in iniquity or evil, but rejoiceth in the truth. It's not happy when they see bad things happen to the people that hurt you, but rejoiceth in the truth. 13 and 7 says, Love beareth all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endureth all things. Love never fails. Hallelujah. It'll last. After all this has passed away, it'll last. Let me tell you something. When I think about loved ones that have gone on to be in, in transition to this next life, I don't think about the bad times. I think of the loving times more than anything. Are you with me? Because love is what stands. And I want to encourage you to just remind you that you make an effort to walk in love on a daily basis with the people that are closest to you. Amen? So they can have memories full of love. Everybody say it's time to soar. It's time to soar. We've been looking at the life of an eagle. Is that, have y'all been getting something out of this? And comparing it to the book of Ephesians. And guess what? There's another point. There's another point. But we're going to review real quickly. Let's look at Isaiah 40 and 31. Everybody say soar. It's time, it's time to fly high. Amen. Like the eagles. I'm almost finished. Isaiah 40 and 31 says this. But those who wait for the Lord, who expect, this is the Amplified Version, who expect, look for, and hope in him, shall what? Change and renew their strength and power. They shall what? Lift their wings and mount up close to God as eagles mount up to the sun. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint or become tired. Amen. We read the contemporary English version earlier. Let's look at the six points about an eagle that we've already studied. Can we do that real quickly? Hallelujah. Glory to God. First thing we said about eagles. Eagles have excellent vision with their own kind. I'm sorry. Excellent vision and focus and concentration. Excellent vision and focus and concentration. Secondly, eagles fly alone or with their own kind. And I want to encourage you. I can't uh, uh, go in detail about this for the sake of time. Go back and listen to the, the last four weeks. I broke these things down. and been real powerful. Thirdly, eagles feed on live food. They don't eat dead things or dead animals. Fourthly, eagles' rebirth involves death of the old self. 
And all this is related to the book of Ephesians. Fifthly, the ego is a master of change, what? Management. We dealt with that, how they, 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 they can flow with change. Amen. And sixthly, we talked about last week, eagles love the storm. They love the storm. Now, are y'all ready for this week? This week, number seven is eagles are high flyers. They're high flyers. Often you must have heard the expression, so high like an eagle, and not notice it's not so high like a hawk. This is because only eagles have the intrinsic ability to soar. Soaring means to fly aloft with little effort, to rise or mount upward on wings in a rapidly or an unusually high manner. Eagles are able to do that. Eagles soar and separate themselves from any other birds. They are in a class of their own, a superior class up there for other birds that, they, that birds long to be in. Eagles can fly up to an altitude, get this now, of 10,000 feet, and they're able to land quickly to catch their prey because they have that good vision. Can you imagine being 10,000 feet spotting your, your meal? Because you can see long term. How many know when you get vision from God, you see long term, and you're thinking about the future where everybody else is trying to live day to day? Are y'all with me? Now let's look at what the lesson is. Say, neighbor, God has called you to be a high flyer. Amen. God has called you to soar with the eagles. Amen. God has called you to walk in your inheritance. God has called you to walk worthy of the calling of God for your life. God has called you to walk in meekness and gentleness. God has called you to walk in humility. God has called you to walk in love. Are y'all with me? Let's look at what the lesson is. High flyers stand out of the crowds. Say, that's me. Through Christ. They live as an outstanding life. See, understand this, when you soar high above obstacles, you can create an extraordinary, what? Life of your own, amen? You have got impeccable standards in your meaning of success, amen, are not necessarily the same as everybody else. Now, I want you to get this last part. The journey in the outstanding lane comes at a price. I saw this quote. I didn't see who it was by, but I had to take it. The journey in the, in, in the outstanding lane comes at a price. It can be very lonely, but be rest assured that you have got enough space to spread your wings for dominance and unrivaled influence. Understand this, when you walk in this walk, it can get lonely at times. When you begin to walk worthy of the calling, amen, you see everybody else compromising, it can get lonely. But God, he separates you out so you can spread your wings so that you can soar for him and you can be a light and he can get the glory. Amen. 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 And amen. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you right now. We honor you for your presence. We thank you for what you're doing in our hearts and in our minds and in our being. And we yield to your will and your way. We choose to soar. We choose to walk worthy of the calling. Understand in order to go high, we must go low. You said if we humble ourselves, you would exalt us. We choose the way of the upside down kingdom. Upside down to the world, but in the kingdom of God is right side up. We seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of your righteousness. Understanding that everything will be added. Lord, that you'll take care of our family. You'll take care of our children. You'll provide a way, God. You give us opportunities as we give you glory. I thank you, God, for businesses that are being committed to you, God. Careers that are being committed to you. Families that are being committed to you, God. So that you might be glorified. Lives that are being committed to you. We give our lives back to you, God. Be glorified, be seen. Cause this word to shake us at our core. Errors at where we need humility. God, where we need meekness and gentleness. God, where we need long-suffering and patience. Oh, God, we just need love. Give us a revelation of your love 
so we can love ourselves. We just thank you, God, and that we can love our brothers and sisters. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God.